Okay, we're going to discuss uh, briefly today building your brand. A lot of this will be review to many of you, and uh, we've discussed this uh, as thing as we've gone along throughout the semester. But there's a few points I want to make, and we didn't quite have time to make them in class, so this is a little catch-up video. Uh, it's important to think about your brand uh, from the beginning of building your business and to try and keep it consistent. Rebranding is much uh, more difficult than branding. Uh, so it's something that you're going to want to consider. Uh, I had some questions about should branding uh, information be in my business plan? Probably there should be some information about branding in your business plan and where you put it in. And it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a section or anything like that. But when you're discussing marketing, branding is a part of marketing. When you're discussing other aspects of your business plan, you can tie branding into that. Uh, just the same as you would tie customer service into various aspects of your business, you would also tie branding into how you're thinking about um, you know, how does branding affect how you uh, select products? How does branding affect what services you offer? Uh, how does branding affect, um, you know, very like, how does branding affect what a restaurant offers on its menu? These are all important things. And as they fit in your business, that's how you would address them. I probably should, upon reading your business plan, be able to look at the plan and say, okay, this is kind of what they're searching for, for their brand identity, or this is what they've decided their brand identity is going to be. You see, your brand uh, is what is how your customers think of and remember you. And it will control the various associations that your customers will make between your business and their lives. Uh, it's really a, a quite a powerful thing. Uh, and we'll go through a couple examples and, and you'll probably already know this, but you'll even more so realize that branding does, uh, does matter, of course. Um, brands shape our opinions um, uh, as to what a business is, what a product is, and they affect us uh, consciously and subconsciously. Uh, one uh, particular example of subconscious is the uh, color selection for McDonald's is designed to make you feel hungry and happy, which, you know, is an obvious thing to do. And if you look at the uh, palette of restaurants, many, many of them do use red because it excites hunger. Uh, your branding efforts are an effort to burn your company into the mind of the consumer. Uh, the idea of branding was literally burning a mark into something, uh, whether it be cattle was what I commonly think of it, or furniture, old furniture would have uh, brands sunk into the wood. And the word brand comes from that tradition. Uh, the brand is often a key differentiator that makes people purchase one type of a product, one similar product or service over another. And brands are, um, are very powerful in that way. Um, the idea of association um, drives branding. And what comes to mind when your customer thinks about your business? Uh, for example, uh, when you think of... Um, like um, Ping, Ping is a golf company, and that that name has an almost musical quality to it, and it brings to mind for anyone who's golfed the sound of a well hit golf ball. That was not accidental, uh, and you've you know that was done on purpose. And you'll know you've created a brand when your customers associate your your product or service your company name or your company motto with a specific idea, feeling, uh, or whatever that you want them to. And the brand will become something that holds what you do and even who your company is in the mind of, of your customer. There are all sorts of parts of a brand. Oh, good. Hang on. There we go. New recording software, and there's a slight lag, and I thought it didn't advance when it did. Um, 
so brand is broken into pieces parts um and there are individual parts that are definitely um important by themselves and all together they come up uh here over in this corner is the uh, mcdonald's logo the colors by themselves are important just the colors are an important part of the part of the brand but this sign is so recognizable with the colors and the shapes that if you see just a sliver of it way off in the distance you'll know there's a mcdonald's there at that exit um you know you can see just like this section of it right here and you would know that oh good <laughs> this is turning into wonderfulness all right so um if this is annoying to you rest assured it is also annoying to me i apologize for this uh, but i don't have time to do this over and over again so we're just gonna have to live with that little stutter in the middle um, notice the disney font and the coca-cola font you could write anything you wanted in this font and it would make you think of disney you could write anything you wanted in this font and it would make you think of coca-cola both companies have brought lawsuits against people for using their font uh, for other things and uh, I guess they've probably won some they probably lost some uh, you see the Apple logo back here the Apple logo is even covered up it's distinctive we know exactly what this is um, and then there's tagline eat fresh uh, a motto or a slogan or a tagline subway is a master with this they push and push and push this eat fresh idea um so we fonts logos the names and even sounds see what this sound brings to mind to you uh we should all probably most of us would recognize that's definitely a very specific ticking clock and that's for 60 minutes that is one of the few uh shows on television that doesn't have any theme music on it which makes it original and more importantly that sound um brings to mind 60 minutes and whatever you associate with 60 minutes whenever you hear it it um it's one of the most recognized sounds in all of television um, general colors I'm going to click on this and see what happens this is an interesting article you can look up 12 brands by their trademark colors uh, we're going to pop this up here for just a minute and skip through it just to look at a couple things so that color right there um, should bring to mind something so take a second and guess and was it T-Mobile um, some people will get that, some people won't. What about that? That color right there. Um, if you have a farming background, you'll probably know what that is. That's John Deere's green. What about this? This yellow color. Post it. I didn't get that one. Okay, so this color red. Go through Target. I can see that in this color yellow caterpillar this color orange ish Home Depot this color teal Tiffany I didn't get that either this color blue Cadbury and this pink is what Owens Corning wow okay that's the pink panther i wouldn't have got that and i had no idea that nexium has that shade of pink this i don't know <laughs> i've never had that now what i find interesting about this list of colors is that i didn't see ups brown in here and that's one of the most recognized colors oh it was at the top and we mixed we missed it 
I don't know how that happened. Um, but this is probably the single most recognized color for a specific color on the planet. So it's called Pullman Brown. Okay, so that's just a color. Now we'll move on from here. And there we go. Um, when branding is done well, it creates a personality for your business and it should be consistent across all aspects of your business. And when I say all aspects of your business, I'm, I'm talking about the products and services you offer. Uh, your employees should um, not necessarily live that brand, but your employees' reaction with your customers should um, support your brand identity. Um, your packaging. Uh, think about, uh, not so much now, but think about the first Apple product that you got. I, Apple products were packaged in such a way that just the package was a work of art and it promised, uh, it promised a unique experience was going to be inside. It's, uh, it was so successful, as a matter of fact, it's been copied by a lot of electronics manufacturers now. But it was originally they were the only ones that would that went through such care to to create your unboxing experience. Um, distributing your advertising especially should um, should um, you know hide ideal or should show your brand very well, and your pricing should be consistent with your brand as well. If you have a high end product, it shouldn't have a low end price, and vice versa. Uh, that's fairly obvious. Um, so the branding will communicate this personality of your product or service to your customer, uh, and it will make them uh, it will make them think about themselves or their lives in a specific way, and that's what you want it to do. Um, so when you're building your brand, um, you need to ask yourself some questions. How would you set yourself apart from other com from other companies? And who is your customer? What do they value? How can you best align your company's purpose with the values of your customers? Because if your if your company supports your customers' values, then you're going to have a brand that will click with your customers. Answering this will give you a meaning. Uh, in order for it to actually become a brand, though, you will have to repeat it over and over consistently with discipline. You'll have to keep delivering the message with sincerity over and over again. We mentioned Subway earlier. Their message, their brand is all about eat fresh. Subway is healthy food. And they highlight the stuff on their menu that backs that up. They hire Olympic athletes as spokespeople. They hire um, I mean, Clayton Kershaw, probably the best pitcher in baseball, uh, advertises. Uh, and it's eat fresh and everything that everybody wants. All of these uh, superstar athletes that advertise for them, their item on the menu is always super healthy. I don't think I've ever seen a single person uh, in a Subway commercial, get the meatball sub because the meatball sub is on the menu for the people who go to Subway and want to be healthy. But then when they get there, they want something that tastes good. But that's not the kind of thing that you're going to see on. Uh, that's not the kind of thing you're going to see on a commercial because that's not in keeping with their brand. Uh, when someone gets chips in a Subway commercial, they usually don't get Doritos. They usually get some baked chip or something like that. And they, uh, they've Subway's recently started carrying a lot of juices, and they'll highlight their apple juice or their orange juice. The apple juice that Subway carries has more sugar in it than the soda, but it, uh, it sounds better. You're drinking natural apple juice. I'm not picking on Subway. I'm just saying that they have a brand message that they want to get out to everybody, and they're incredibly consistent at it. And that's what they do. Okay. Um, so basically, I hate saying basically. I'm sorry I did that. To sum all of this up, the one question 
that you would want to that you would want to ask when it comes to brand is when people think of your business what do you want them to think of first if you answer that you're well on your way to having a brand that will be very well recognized thank you